Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Today we continue celebrating the month of October by working on our spooky auto runner game. Now last time we not only fixed but built on our player control over the ghost hero. We also started working on a boss fight that featured two different attack patterns. That's right, we went straight for the good stuff, just like a kid on Halloween making a beeline for the houses that had the good stuff. Yeah, you remember. Anyway, today we continue working on the good stuff by tweaking our existing boss fight a bit and then starting on yet another boss fight. This new boss fight will work completely differently to the first, including the way they take damage. This will set up the next episode, which will hopefully bring this whole thing together. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and get today's plan done first. Before we jump into things, let's take a look at the art in action. The ghost sprite now has four different states, all of which feature graphics that depict each state in adorably spooked fashion. This includes a damage state, which currently doesn't do anything, but put our ghost friend in a momentary state of ghostly pain. I've also added the player's character. It can now poke the ghost to stop it for a moment or swat at it to get it to move in another direction. And yes, it may be mean to swat at a frightened ghost, but you know, tough love. Anyway, as far as background features, I have recreated slash reapplied art from that which inspired this concept, Super Mario World. There is still obviously more art to be done, but as we'll demonstrate today, sometimes waiting until after the code has settled is probably a good idea. But before we could get to any tweaking, we needed to implement a health system for the boss fights. So creating a parent object for our bosses, I gave it two variables for health and max health. I then drew a health bar for bosses on screen, which will be prettied up once we get the art added. For now, we just had to keep track of the boss's health and get a general idea of where the health bar would look best. I went with the bottom of the screen. Now that our health system is in place, we could technically make our boss mortal. For our current boss, I wanted it to lose health anytime it did one of the attacks. This will make sense later. I needed the dropper attack to execute in a sequence rather than all at once. I did this by checking the current state of the attack and having a counter space out the timing of each dropper spawned. It would continuously execute until the droppers were created, depleting its health with each dropper spawned. It then waits to return to its default state. This uh, ended up not working like I thought it would. It would only execute once, which was odd, I thought. So instead, I decided to take advantage of GameMaker's features and place this sequence in an alarm event. That way, I only needed to trigger it once, and the code would do the rest. This thankfully fixed the issue, and the boss was now able to cycle through the spawn code three times like we needed it to. In retrospect, yes, I totally could have just used the same system we used for the second attack, but our boss is now ready for animation, so we could move on to coding our second boss fight. Now this boss fight may seem a little familiar, and that's because it's basically a modified version of our ghost hero. Indeed, much like our ghost hero, the boss slowly bounces around the play area in random directions. However, as time goes on, the boss will start to pick up speed. And if that's not different enough from our first boss, this boss slowly loses health over time. Making this fight less about RNG and more about pure endurance, uh, with a dose of RNG. I made several tweaks to get it working just right, trying to find a nice balance between speed increase and health drain. I also think I slightly broke it a bit by implementing a similar visual flip effect and the bounce check, but eventually I found a nice balance and had the boss lose even more health anytime it would bounce off a wall. I felt like this made the boss less of a chore and allowed players to focus more on handling the ghosts rather than worrying about the boss taking too long to die. And there we had it, two very different boss fights, both with their own attack styles and ways of being defeated, all of which simply require the player to keep their little ghost friend under control. All that's left is the remaining art and a little bit more to tie it all together. Also a shout out to my capture recording this session at a lower resolution than normal. I swear the graphics aren't that blurry. Anyway, next episode should be our last and I'm excited to see the final results, but that'll have to wait until next time. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy less dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.